former White House advisor, longtime ally of former President Trump, Steve Bannon, has been sentenced to four months in prison for contempt of Congress. Bannon was convicted of two counts of contempt of Congress for defying a subpoena from the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol. ABC News Justice Department reporter Alex Mallon joining me now on the phone for more. So Alex, how did we get here and how significant are these charges? Well, we got here because Steve Bannon just outright defied a, su a subpoena from the January 6th Select Committee investigating the attack on the Capitol, um, a subpoena for his testimony and any records uh, related to his involvement in the planning uh, and any communications that he may have had with President Trump and his allies leading up to the attack. Um, and because Steve Bannon defied that subpoena, the Congress voted to uh, hold him in contempt, and the Justice Department made the rare move of filing charges against him, two criminal contempt of Congress charges. Um, and they did not take that step when uh, the House voted to hold the Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in contempt um, or President Trump's social media advisor, Dan Scabino. Um, but in the case of Bannon, because his defiance was just outright, I will not cooperate in any, any form or fashion with this committee, um, they moved to press charges. So the, the trial actually moved pretty quickly. He was, held, uh, he was found guilty on both charges. And today, Judge Carl Nichols uh, did uh, sentence him to four months in prison and is ordering him to pay a $6,500 fine. Now, that fine is on the very low end of what DOJ was asking for him to pay. DOJ actually wanted six months in prison for him and for him to pay a $200,000 fine. Um, so Judge Carl Nichols here, he's, he is staying the sentence, meaning Bannon is not going to have to report to prison. Uh, today, he's basically saying he's going to let Bannon try and move this up on appeal. Uh, he said that he wants the, that appeal to be timely, though. So it's unclear when exactly we will see Bannon to uh, report uh, to prison. Um, and he has a chance. Judge Carl Nichols has kind of noted that he believes that Bannon has a potential chance to overturn his conviction entirely upon appeal. Um, so, again, it's just we're going to have to now see where this goes once Bannon's attorneys formally move to move this up to the D.C. Circuit uh, Court of Appeals. But this, this is a significant moment because this, as the January 6th committee has tried to make clear, um, they take this investigation extremely seriously and they think that their, subpo their subpoena power needs to be respected. Um, and that is kind of the point I think that they are now looking to make as they move towards formally subpoena, uh, giving a subpoena to former President Donald Trump. Um, I mean, the, the clock is ticking on that, obviously, and it's unclear whether they would be able to move for a formal contempt citation for him if he decides to completely defy them uh, and whether the Justice Department would eventually act on that subpoena. So, Alex, just take us back in time, if you don't mind, and make a distinction for us. So what about if people are just hearing this headline and they think, wait a second, when President Trump was president, he pardoned Bannon. So how is Bannon being sent to jail or given this uh, given this the, the sentence yeah, so, that came down? So so yeah, President Trump's pardon of Bannon was obviously before he left office, um, before the January 6th uh, attack, uh, or it was actually after the January 6th attack. But um, that was over a criminal charges that Bannon was facing in the Southern District of New York related to a scam of President Trump's own supporters. Uh, uh, Bannon and associates uh, mounted this crowd uh, crowdfunding campaign called We Build the Wall. And basically, he was accused by prosecutors of bilking Trump's own supporters to donate funds to this, uh, this Build the Wall campaign that he then used for personal expenses, to personally enrich himself. And those were very serious charges. Bannon faced years in prison uh, if he was found guilty. But in the middle of that case, President Trump did pardon him. So that threw that entire case out. Now, now, mind you, Bannon is actually facing now state charges in New York um, related to that uh, fundraising uh, you know, scam. Um, he's pleaded not guilty, so it's unclear uh, where that case will go. Uh, they are, I mean, that, again, those charges are much more serious in the, in the form of fraud than contempt of Congress, you know, which is a rarely used statute. A uh, DOJ rarely prosecutes it because uh, it's, it's basically a slippery slope argument uh, in terms of when a member of uh, when Congress decides to subpoena somebody and they de somebody defies that subpoena, they don't want to get into the business of having to do Congress's work for them, their legwork of trying to pull people in front of them, especially when, you know, you're looking at potentially a House that is going to be taken over by Republicans 
um, come November. And if, you know, committees in that are, are Republican then start to subpoena members of President Biden's cabinet or members of President Biden's administration and they, you know, don't want to cooperate, DOJ had to walk a really fine line here. And that's why I guess, you know, we didn't see them um, indict Mark Meadows or Dan Scavino, even though they offered some li uh, limited cooperation with the January 6th Select Committee. So that was the line I think DOJ uh, tried to draw here. If you just outright defy a subpoena from Congress, they will indict. But if you provide some limited cooperation, uh, that will be taken under consideration by prosecutors. But Alex, I heard what you said, which stuck out in my mind, which is that this four ban in this four months uh, today may increase some pressure on the former president to answer the subpoena. Although some people say that will never in a million years happen, but we will watch it. Thank you for pointing that out, Alex. Grateful to you for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.